I hate gossip. This ticks me off more than any negative human behavior I run into. It is so destructive and it is so socially accepted. Most places are full of people that just shut up and work. Talking about each other, talking about your sex life. I don't want to hear about that crap. Get to work. Uh, you hear about Santa and, and talking about the boss and talking about this and talking about the product line. And nye, nye, nye. Negative, 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 negative. I can't stand it. Drives me nuts. And I got to tell you, man, I fight it. We will not have it. I will fire your butt for this. Can you tell I'm fired up about it still? And I, got, it, and I didn't start out with this. It took me a little while to learn to hate it. But I mean, I, we, we used to have it named after a woman because that's the first one that we figured it out with. Sharon told me six months before, she said, you got problems with that when I have a feeling. I'm like, well, she's one of our top salespeople. What do you mean? She's just one of, she's a different personality. She's just a go-getter. And you, you know, she's just one of those and she just won't shut up and that just makes you uncomfortable. No, no, I have a feeling. All right, whatever. But I was having all these, you ever had this thing where there's something going on and you can't figure out what it is? There's like crap in the air, but you can't figure out the source. I, I mean, I don't know about you, but that, that drives me nuts. I, I got to know what's going on with stuff. And, and so we're, there's about 10 of us at that time. And I, I was, you know, I had a weekly staff meeting. We started doing this early. And um, I finished the staff meeting and I've got an appointment. And so I head out the door to my car and I forgot my keys. I walk back in. This woman's having the second meeting. Everybody's standing there. Her back's to me. She didn't hear me come in. And she's telling them all what an idiot I am and how this isn't going to work. And I can't believe he does this. And they're all standing there looking at me, looking at her. And it's kind of one of those things that suddenly you kind of, you could just tell that suddenly she realized something was wrong and someone was standing behind her. She felt it, you know. And you could just kind of, it's that oh crap moment, right? And she turned around and saw me, and of course she almost passed out then. And uh, so I just said, come on in my office, and um, we sat down, and I said, go ahead and pack your stuff up, and you need to leave. You mean, you're going to fire me? I said, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I said just about like that. I didn't even raise my voice, I was because my, my blood pressure was just like, boom. And, um, and, and she's like, what, what, what? And I said, well, you know, I've, I've known there was a problem with the culture here, and I figured out what it is. And she said, what do you mean? I said, it's you. I said, you're disloyal. And when I give you money to operate inside this organization, and then you tear this very organization down, that makes you a thief. And I don't work with thieves. Well, I can't believe you'd say that. I said, I know you can't believe I'd say it. You can't believe I say a lot of things, apparently. So, really, this... You know, and if you think I'm an idiot and you continue to work here, that makes you not smart. So we are really done. And you need to pack your desk. Well, what about severance? I said, no, severance is the fact that I kept you six months longer than I should have. That's, that's severance. And I went back later and did pay her some money uh, for some commissions that were outstanding after I calmed down. But that day I didn't. Um, so we used to name it after her. I don't do that anymore because... It's not really fair. It's a concept that's bad. But I don't understand it. I don't grasp it. If you hate your pastor and hate your church, go to another church. You're a fool if you stay there. But your job is not there to spread dissension. Your job is not there to tear the place down. Leave. I do not understand people that pee in their cereal and then complain because it tastes bad. I don't get this. It does not make sense to me. It's not logical. I will not put up with it. I will warn you once as a teaching method, and then I will fire you. And we tell you this in the onboarding. This will get you fired faster than anything else in this place. I really can't stand it because it tears down the whole place. And here's what's interesting. Everyone seems to agree with this idea, even gossips. They like the theory because they don't think they're gossips. It's really interesting. No one says, oh, now you tweet it and you get, oh, you're, you know, that, that's illegal. You can't fire people for gossiping. What? 
There's geniuses on Twitter, right? You can't fire people for gossiping. Gossips are not a protected federal class, okay? And we have to go here again? They're not. Yeah, it's just, no, you're fired. You're going to get sued. No, I'm not. Hadn't been sued. Never been sued. And if you want to sue me, bring it. Bring it. Lots of money and real pissed off. No money and no backbone. We'll see who wins. Bring it. That's how we handle it, right? Because, you know, don't, you, you're messing with something. We've spent unbelievable amount of time and energy creating, and you're trying to screw it up. You're the enemy. You will leave this building. We're not going to do it. And we're real clear about it. We talk about it in staff meeting. We deal with it. We're clear. We let people know what's going on with it. We're not going to do it. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. By definition, gossip is when a negative is discussed with anyone who can't solve the problem. So our deal is simply this. If you have a problem, no, I'll take that back. When you have a problem. Because usually we bring you in here to work on a problem. That's kind of what we do. So you are going to have problems. If you don't have any problems, you should be worried about other things because it means we probably don't need you. So you're going to have problems. And in nothing is moved unless it's shoved. And when things are shoved, it creates friction. So be ready. There's 370 opportunities to find someone who doesn't like you or the way you do things or you to find someone that you don't like or the way they do things when you have a problem. And you will have one. You have one option with it. Hand the problem up the food chain somewhere into leadership so they can help you fix the problem, solve the problem, fund the answer to the problem, but the receptionist can't fix this for you. And so dropping by and leaning on her desk with a cup of coffee and going, do you know, did you hear about the new sales program that's not going to work? You get one once, and it will be a very clear and direct, and I don't even put it in writing, I don't need to, because I'm not gonna do it again, and it's not gonna, I don't have to keep it in writing. I will warn you once, and you will change, period. And I gotta tell you, Christians are the worst, because, you know, we're gonna develop a prayer list, right? What? No. No, you're not either. Not gonna do it. We're not doing it, so. By definition, gossip is when a negative is discussed with anyone who can't help solve the problem. So you got a problem with your computer, you can't get a phone, you can't get a thing, can't get, you know, your computer's broken. Don't be fussing about the IT people to the marketing people. They don't fix computers and they don't hire the IT people. You got to talk to somebody in IT at the top of the food chain or you got to go talk to your leader or you got to talk to another leader somewhere in the building if you're really frustrated. That's fine. But you got to hand your negatives up and your positives down. And when you're handing your negatives up, you can't be belligerent. You can be enthusiastic and passionate, but you can't be belligerent. That's not okay either. I had one lady that came in and she said, my boss is an idiot. The guy leading our area is a horrible leader. Here's all the things wrong with his leadership. I said, well, I understand that you feel that way, but he is the leader and I'm not letting him go today based on your recommendation. (laughs) So now we got a problem. Okay, we got a lot of problems here. So you, I'm working on some things with him, and I'm not going to sit him here and trash him with one of his team members and agree with all of your line items. I will tell you that he is aware of some of his deficits, and he is working on some of those things. And some of them are on your list, and I'm giving him time to work through those and grow as a leader. And I appreciate your concern. Can you exist in that environment and give him grace to grow as a leader and support him in that process. I don't know. I'm really frustrated. Okay. Well, you need to think about it. Because that's, you know, you handed your negative up. You did the appropriate thing. I mean, three more of these meetings. It just keeps, she just keeps coming back and keeps coming back, keeps coming back. And finally, she's like, this is, I just, get, this is just ridiculous. And I said, well, you've got to leave. Why do I have to leave? Because you think I'm not a good leader. Oh, no, I would work for you. Honey, you do work for me. And he works for me. And if I allow him to stay and he's incompetent in your eyes, then by definition, I'm incompetent. And so every time you continue to complain about him at this level, 
you're, you're saying, I'm not aware of it and I'm not doing anything about it and I'm not a good leader by allowing him to stay in this position. And so you think that I'm incompetent. Oh, no. I said, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. That's why you keep coming back in here. You're trying to school me. And so finally, we just reached the end of that. And I, you know, she had to leave. But she really never got it, honestly. She never got that, that logic flow that I was laying out there. She never really understood it. But it just reached a point that she had lost faith in her leader, she had lost that and was, you know, and was gossiping about it. That was the other part of the story. She gathered up and, you know, it's so funny. Worked here six years, heard these, these lessons over and over and over again, six years, but gathered a group of people to talk about the leader and how, how the department could be better without the leader there and without me there. And I said, so what did you call that? A gossip session? Well, that was not gossip. That's how we do things in our family. I said, your family's dysfunctional. You gather at, the, uh, at, at, at Thanksgiving and whoever's not there, you talk about them. Is that what y'all do? That's what a lot of families do. Our family, you have to attend Thanksgiving dinner or you're the target, right? And, and you know, so that, we're not doing that. And she didn't get it. It was unbelievable. So you wouldn't believe how many times. I got one. I had one about 18 months ago. It was unbelievable. This guy was making this company money. He was a great sales guy. And he and another team member start going back and forth, back and forth about their leader. Yeah, 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 yeah. About their leader. Yeah, 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 yeah. And texting and texting and texting. And, and oh, instant messaging, right, on my computers. It's amazing. And, and so... Um, then, of course, what one of them does is they accidentally hit, put the leader, copied the leader they were talking about in on the thread and accidentally hit send and had an oh crap moment, right? And uh, so my leader's reading this and then he just follows the thread and it just goes on and on and on. And he comes in and he goes, I don't even know what to do with this. I, you know, we've talked to these guys about this, which they had been talked to before about it. But, and, and, you know, we pull the thread on the thing. We go into the instant message. We go into their emails. It's this thick. And we printed it out. I mean, it wasn't one or two times. I mean, they're just spending like half their productive time discussing what a bozo they work for and how dumb Dave is for letting him. When Dave's doing donkey and thoroughbreds, I wonder if he's thinking about so-and-so's a donkey. You know? And I'm reading all this stuff, and, and I sit down with the guy, and he goes, I can't believe I'm being let go. I can't believe you let me go. Is there not anything I could do? I said, yeah, if there was one page, there'd be something you could do. Dude, you wrote a phone book about me. A phone book. There's no way I can trust you after this. I, how can I, how, could you trust you? I, don't, I, just, I just want another chance, yeah. I'm sorry, dude. The, the volume of this doesn't dictate another chance. And it was sad because he was actually a productive guy in terms of his sales creation. But it doesn't matter who you are. I'm not going to have that. And, and, you know, and his leader was like, gosh, did I do something wrong? Yeah, we all did something wrong. We hired him and we kept him. And we're not going to do that wrong anymore. We're going to fix that. They're both gone that day. Boom. And I, I, I don't understand human nature because it, it's clearly laid out. Go there, dead meat. And they still go there. It doesn't happen very often. But boy, I tell you what, when leadership acts on that and people get the idea of what the thing is going on, it changes the culture. Not to fear. They don't all walk around in fear about it, but they appreciate, they love this place. It's the best place to work in Nashville. You know why? One of the reasons is there's no gossip and everyone loves it.